Marta. Thank you, Chris. Uh, now, uh, Miroslav Palansky, which is a researcher at Charles University, will talk about how tax havens and secrecy jurisdictions specialize with the help of financial intermediaries. Uh, cool. cool. Thanks. Um, yeah, so this is about tax havens, as, as a lot of the papers here. This is joint work with Petr Jansky, who presented yesterday as part of Coffers. So, just to you know, sum up how we have identified uh, OFCs or offshore finance centers or tax havens, whatever you may call them, over the years. So, the most classic one is a, is a binary approach, right? You either classify a tax haven as it is a tax haven or it is not a tax haven. So, this obviously, this approach has a lot of drawbacks. Uh, most of them are very well known and most of them pose you know, high limits on, on, uh, on the stuff that we can do with them, econometrically and, and otherwise. Now, some of these limitations were overcome by the European Commission's uh, list that is being continuously updated over, the, you know, over time as jurisdictions uh, supposedly improve uh, their, their cooperation with the, with the European Union. We'll see how that goes. Uh, obviously, the, there, has been, there have been efforts to, to overcome this, to, to use a different approach than the, than the binary one. And that would be continuous measures, okay? we, we can call them that. Uh, the first one that I have here is the consensus approach, which has been pioneered, I think, by Richard. I don't know if, if that was your, your idea. Basically, this is taking lots of tax haven lists from different studies and kind of uh, counting the number of, of appearances of each of the jurisdictions on these lists. So that creates you know, a, a number from zero to whatever uh, the number of studies that you use. And then if it's on all studies uh, mentioned as a tax haven, then it's a much more of a tax haven than... Um, than, than a jurisdiction that's mentioned just once. Now, another continuous measure is the so-called two-criterion approach, which uh, I will be speaking mostly about today. So this two-criterion approach is based on two criteria, of course. The first one is the qualitative criterion. So this asks how much does a jurisdiction allow things to happen? Okay, so by things, I mean you know, providing services that, uh, that help foreigners abuse uh, or you know, undermine or escape the, the legislation of their home country. Now, the second criterion is a quantitative one, and that asks how much do these things happen, okay? So, if there is a, so this is, a, this is an approach obviously pioneered by the FSI and the CTHI, so, so the, both of these indices use this approach. Basically, so we ask, you know, in the qualitative criterion, we ask whether it's possible, and, you know, if it is, then there is high chance that it will be used, okay? But unless it is not used, it's not much of a problem for the world economy. Okay, so that's the idea behind the two criterion approach. Now, what do we want to track by the two criterion approach? So what does it mean to be an OFC? First, of course, is low taxation. Okay, that's, that's probably the, the most straightforward one that, that you know, people would think of. So those jurisdictions would be called tax havens. The second main part is secrecy. So those jurisdictions we can call the secrecy jurisdictions. There's, there's some other stuff like regulatory framework. Uh, we can speak about pollution havens and so on. So this, these have appeared in the literature, but we argue that they're not that important as the first two. And so the existing two criteria approach data sources that you can use to construct a, 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 you know, a measure of, of how much of a tax haven it is. And on the qualitative side, we have the haven scores and the secrecy scores provided by the two indices of the Tax Justice Network. We have tax rates, we have citizenship by investment, as we heard yesterday, we have a bunch of other stuff. Okay, so this would mean any services, any regulatory uh, loopholes, anything that would allow those things to happen. Okay, on the other side, the quantitative criterion, we have uh, data on foreign direct investment that are used in the CTHI as global scale weights. We have data from the balance of payments from which uh, we take the exports of financial services and use them for the financial secrecy index uh, uh, global scale weights. Then we have data from BIS, from uh, uh, so the Bank for International Settlements. We have data on uh, portfolio investment, we have data on trade from Contrade. So all these uh, six sources, I think, are used by, uh, by efforts of, uh, of Alex and, and uh, you know, some, people, some other people at Tax Justice Network, uh, which we have seen present also yesterday on illicit financial flows. We could also use profit shifting estimates as a measure of, of how much things happen and, uh, and estimates of illicit financial flows as well. So you know, I, I will let your imagination uh, fill in the three dots at, at the end so you can use basically any any quantitative measure of how much things happen. Now, in this paper, we're gonna use parts of the FSI and the CTHI to answer two questions, okay? So the first one I will call specialization, 
It will ask which tax havens or secrecy jurisdictions will uh, specialize in low taxation, which in secrecy, and which in both. Okay? Um, so that will be the first part. The second part will be what role do financial intermediaries play in all this? So for that, we'll, we're going to combine the two criterion approach uh, by, by, the, by the FSI and the CTHI. We're going to combine that with uh, data on where the big four is present okay, in this paper. Uh, all right. So if we just look at the results of the FSI and the CTHI, so the, both, both of these two indices already combine the two criteria. So you see that there are some jurisdictions that are high in both. Okay, so there, there are jurisdictions such as the Cayman Islands, which are estimated to be large contributors to both the problem of secrecy and the problem of tax havens. Okay, then there are some uh, countries that are uh, you know, thought to be more um, into the secrecy world, such as the United States of America, as, as you know, estimated by these two indices. And then there are some who are not that secretive, but you know, are, are uh, focused on, on low taxation, such as the uh, British Virgin Islands, Bermuda, or the Netherlands. All right, now, what we do in this paper to kind of accommodate our need for you know, finding how, the, how these OFCs specialize is that, that we adjust the quantitative criterion a little bit. Because the original question of the quantitative criterion is how much do these things happen? Now, this is very good for you know, identifying which, you know, how much each tax haven contributes to the problem, but not so much for how much they specialize. For that, we would need to somehow relate it to the size of the jurisdiction. Okay? So obviously, the United States of America will have more foreign direct investment than Bermuda. But that does not mean that the United States of America specialize more in being in tax haven than Bermuda. Okay, so what we do in this paper is we ask a better question for the quantitative criteria, and that is how much more than we would expect do these things happen. Okay? And to do that, we calculate the so-called excess global scale weight. Now, what that means, this is my equation. It's very short. Uh, just, uh, we're, you know, so we're using, in the first step, we estimate this equation for countries who are not thought to be tax havens. Okay, so who have a haven score or a secrecy score lower than 65, which is kind of a natural threshold that, uh, that you know, you see from the data emerging as, you know, separating jurisdictions that we usually think of as tax havens and secrecy jurisdictions. And we estimate it for these countries, and then we predict, predict based on these uh, on the value of the uh, based on the values of the coefficients from this regression, we predict it for the other countries, okay, for the tax havens. And uh, then the excess global scale weight is just the difference between the actual global scale weight that we measure in the data, and the expected one that we estimate from our uh, from our regression. All right, so let's take a look at the results of the CTHI. If we uh, you know plot on the y-axis, we have the haven scores. On the x-axis, we have the excess global scale weight. Okay, so this is a bit different from, from the actual global scale weight. Okay, so countries such as the United States of America are not even there. So these are just countries who have a uh, you know, global scale weight higher than we would expect. Okay, so they have been able to attract disproportionate amount of activity of multinationals into their jurisdiction. Now, we see that there is a clear trend that you know, the more of a tax haven you are based on the qualitative criterion, the more you have been able to attract of this uh, disproportionate FDI. Okay, we can do the same for uh, the, sec the financial secrecy index. So we use the secrecy score as the qualitative criterion here. And we use, the, again, the, uh, the excess global scale weight at, on the, the x-axis. We again see a correlation which is not that strong, but still it is there. So based on these graphs, you can see which jurisdictions really have been successful in attracting, you know, so they have been successful in attracting the, the activity that they have been targeting. Okay, with their policies. All right. Now, for the role of the intermediaries, I, I'll have the same graph as this one, but I will also add one more thing, and that is the presence of the big four. So the size of the bubble means how much, you know, the, that's the share of the big four staff on the GDP of the country. Now, you see, you see a big cluster uh, uh, on, the, on the top there. So those are, those are uh, tax havens, which have a high haven score, and at the same time, they have been able to attract, so, so this, this number here actually on the, this doesn't work. So if it's close to one, so for British Virgin Islands, the number is 99%. So 99% so of uh, foreign direct investment that has been attracted into uh, British Virgin Islands could not be predicted by the economic size of the British Virgin Islands. Okay. All right, so you see a cluster of, of you know, big bubbles close to that, uh, close to that one. Uh, you can also break this down by, by the different categories of the CTHI. So you see that less it, the corporate rate, is, is uh, very important. The anti-avoidance um, down here on the bottom, bottom middle also plays a big role. So all the, big, uh, all the tax havens that have these high 
levels of, quant of qualitative criteria and quantitative as well have been able to somehow attract the presence of the big four. I'm going to skip the same results for FSI. They're not that uh, uh, persuasive as for the CTHI. But I'm going to skip to uh, a graph that shows the Haven score and the secrecy score so that, uh, you know, on, on these two axes. So this um, disregards completely the excess uh, global scale weight. So we just see that you know, if there is the qualitative side of things, okay, so if, if the jurisdiction allows things to happen, then the big four is there. Okay, so that, that, that's kind of what this graph is saying. All right, so my final slide. So the main findings, we, you know, we explore in this paper the usefulness of the two criterion approach. And, uh, you know, we use it to find that Haven scores are highly correlated with disproportionate activity of multinationals. Secrecy scores as well. Uh, but, well, secrecy scores don't really speak just about uh, multinationals, but about, uh, you know, um, individuals as well. Um, so we do not find that much of a correlation there. We find that especially important qualitative criteria that uh, have been able to attract a lot of the big four and a lot of activity of multinationals are the low corporate tax rate, anti-avoidance rules, so the lack of anti-avoidance rules, sorry. And uh, from the secrecy scores uh, indicators, it's mostly the ownership registration category that plays a big role. Uh, we also do find that intermediaries disproportionately are present in jurisdictions that combine high qualitative and quantitative criteria. Now, we're not really sure of the causality there, whether the big four are there because of the rules or you know, whether the activity is there because the big four is there. So we're not really speaking about that. Uh, so this is mo mostly about correlation, finding where the big four is present and why. And uh, some of, you know, one, of the, one of the concrete findings could be that if you have a jurisdiction in which there are low tax rates and vague anti-avoidance rules, you can be pretty sure that you're going to meet a lot of big four staff in the streets. All right, that's all for me. Thanks.